Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shri Vanilla. Today's topic is leukoplakia. Let's learn about leukoplakia. What is leukoplakia? Leukoplakia is a whitish patch or plaque that cannot be characterized clinically or pathologically as any other disease. And it is not associated with any other physical or chemical causative agent except the use of tobacco. Now let's learn how leukoplakia is classified. According to clinical description, it is classified as homogeneous leukoplakia, non-homogeneous leukoplakia. Homogeneous leukoplakia is completely whitish lesion. It is further classified based upon its appearance as follows. First one, flat leukoplakia. It has smooth surface. Second one, corrugated leukoplakia. It looks like a beach at ebbing tide. Third one, cumice like leukoplakia. It appears as a pattern of fine lines like cristae. Fourth one, sprinkle leukoplakia. It appears as dry, cracked mud surface. Now, let's learn about non homogeneous leukoplakia. Non homogeneous leukoplakia is also further classified as nodular or speckled leukoplakia, varicose leukoplakia, ulcerated leukoplakia, erythra leukoplakia. Okay, now let's uh, go in detail regarding nodular or speckled leukoplakia. It appears as white specks or nodules on erythematous base. Next, now let's uh, go in detail regarding varicose. Varicose leukoplakia is a slow growing papillary proliferation above the mucosal surface and that may be heavily keratinized. In this, extensive lesion of this type is called as oral florid papillomatos. Next, ulcerated leukoplakia. These lesions exhibit red area at the periphery of which white patches are present. Erythra leukoplakia. Leukoplakia, if present, in association with erythroplakia, then it is called erythroleukoplakia. Leukoplakia is also classified based on the etiology as tobacco induced, non tobacco induced leukoplakia. And based upon risk of future development of oral cancer, leukoplakia is classified as high risk sites, low risk sites, intermediate group. Floor of mouth, lateral or ventral surface of tongue, soft palate, these all are high risk sites of leukoplakia. Dorsum of tongue, hard palate are low risk sites of leukoplakia and all other sites and oral mucosa are comes under intermediate group now based upon histology leukoplakia is classified as dysplastic non dysplastic and based upon extent leukoplakia is classified as localized diffuse According to Banoxy, leukoplakia is classified as leukoplakia simplex, leukoplakia erosiva, leukoplakia varicosa. Let's go little uh, details regarding uh, leukoplakia simplex, leukoplakia erosiva and leukoplakia varicosa. First, let's uh, learn about leukoplakia simplex. Leukoplakia simplex is a uniform raised plaque formation varying in size with the regular edges and homogeneous type. Leukoplakia erosiva is a lesion with slightly raised, rounded, red or whitish 
and it appears like a granules or nodules. Look up like a verrucosa. It is characterized by verrucous proliferation raised above the mucosal surface. Now let's learn about etiology, the causating factors of leukoplakia. Leukoplakias like tobacco, alcohol, sanguinaria, chronic irritation, candidiasis, electromagnetic reaction or galvanism. And uh, when it comes to regional and systemic factors, syphilis, vitamin A and B complex deficiency, xerostomia, anticholinergic, anti-metabolic drugs and systemically administered alcohol, herpes simplex, human papilloma virus and idiopathic. Now let's learn local causating factors of leukoplakia in detail. First one, tobacco. Tobacco is used widely in two forms. One is smokeless tobacco and other one is smoking tobacco. Smoking tobacco, uh, smoking tobacco means it's like cigar, cigarette, BD and pipe. And smokeless tobacco is chewable tobacco, oral use of snuff. Okay. If, okay, first we learn about smokeless tobacco. Okay. Nitrosonor, nicotine, nicotine, pyridine, picoline, colidine, these all are the chemical constituents of chewed tobacco. These are alkaline pH of 8.2 to 9.3 and they act as local irritants and cause alterations of mucosa. Next, smoking tobacco. It contains polycyclic hydrocarbons, beta naphthalamine, nitrosamines, carbon monoxide, nicotine, these all act as source of irritation and also the heat produced by smoking tobacco. It causes alteration of the tissue whichever got exposed to heat. Next, alcohol. Leukoplakia is higher among the regular and occasional drinkers than the non-drinkers. Alcohol facilitates the entry of carcinogen into exposed cells and thus alters the oral epithelium and its metabolism. Next, sanguinaria. This is a herbal extract used in toothpaste and mouth rinse. It can cause true leukoplakia. Most commonly seen in maxillary vestibule or on alveolar mucosa. Next, chronic irritation. Continuous trauma or local irritation in oral cavity is suspected as a causative agent for leukoplakia. Source of irritation or trauma may be due to malocclusion, ill-fitting dentures, sharp broken teeth, hot spicy food, root piece, etc. Next, candidiasis. Candida albicans has been reported very frequently in association with leukoplakia more commonly with nodular type of leukoplakia. Next, electromagnetic reaction or galvanism. What is galvanism? Galvanism is a generation of current due to difference in the electrical potential of two dissimilar metals. Galvanic current may arise in mouth between dissimilar opposing or adjacent metallic restorations. In this case, Patient complains of a mere metallic taste to persistent pain due to chronic inflammation of adjacent or a mucosa. Next, regional and systemic causating factors for leukoplakia. First one, syphilis. It is a predisposing factor for the development of leukoplakia. Next, vitamin A, vitamin B complex deficiency. Deficiency of vitamin A is known to produce metaplasia and keratinization of certain epithelial structures. Hence, it may be causative factor for leukoplakia. Vitamin B complex deficiency might be related to alteration in the oxidation pattern of the epithelium, making it more susceptible to irritation. Next, xerostomia. 
some conditions like salivary gland diseases anticholinergic drugs and radiation these all cause xerostomia and which may lead to leukoplakia next anticholinergic drugs anti metabolic drugs systemically administered alcohol may predispose for the occurrence of leukoplakia next herpes simplex and human papilloma virus these are believed to induce mucosal changes by altering the dna and chromosomal structure of the cells and also by inducing proliferation of such altered cells next idiopathic in a small proportion of cases no underlying cause has been found such lesions are termed as idiopathic leukoplakia now let's learn about clinical features of leukoplakia first one sex and age it occurs more commonly in older age group that is 35 to 45 years and above and also males are more affected more frequently than females this is due to direct consequence of tobacco habit next common sites it can occur anywhere on oral mucosa based upon the type of tobacco habit buccal mucosa and commissures are more commonly involved in men depletions and in women tongue lesions are more common and sometimes in edentulous patient alveolar ridge can be involved locations in descending order of frequency of involvement is as follows commissures then comes buccal mucosa then comes lips then comes tongue then comes palate then comes alveolar ridge then comes floor of mouth then comes soft palate then comes gingiva next extent the extent of involvement may vary from small to well localized and irregular patches to diffuse lesions involving considerable portion of oral mucosa multiple areas of involvement are not uncommon next color lesion may be white or yellowish white but with heavy use of tobacco lesion may appear in brownish color also next surface the surface of the lesion is often finely wrinkled or shriveled in appearance and may feel rough on palpation symptoms so what are the symptoms of leukoplakia so some common symptoms like feeling of increased thickness of mucosa and uh, patient complains of burning sensation and which is associated with uh, ulcerated and nodular type of leukoplakia and uh, important point enlarged cervical lymph nodes may be single occurrence of metastasis now let's learn about diagnosis clinical diagnosis clinically any white patch with history of tobacco chewing which cannot be rubbed off is a diagnostic indicator for leukoplakia next laboratory diagnosis in biopsy you can see hyperarthrokeratosis hyperparakeratosis acanthosis of epithelium epithelial dysplasia liquefaction degeneration basal cell hyperplasia scanning electron microscopy will show epithelial dysplastic changes now let's learn about differential diagnosis of leukoplakia lichen planus chemical burn syphilitic mucus patches white sponge nevus discoid lupus erythematosus psoriasis leukoedema verruca vulgaris verrucous carcinoma cheek biting lesion electrogalvanic white lesion hairy look hairy leukoplakia 
these all come under differential diagnosis of leukoplakia. Now let's learn management. Elimination of etiological factors like prohibition of smoking, removal of chronic irritant, elimination of other etiological factors like syphilis, alcohol, dissimilar metal restriction, etc. Next, conservative treatment. What all come under conservative treatment of leukoplakia? Vitamin therapy, therapeutic dose of 75,000 to 300,000 international units given for 3 months and vitamin A plus vitamin E therapy also given for leukoplakia patients. Not only this, 13 cis retinoic acid, it is a synthetic analog of vitamin A and it is usually given in high doses of 1.5 to 2 mg per kg body weight for 3 months for leukoplakia patients. Next come to antioxidant therapy. Beta carotene supplementation can be beneficial for treatment of oral leukoplakia. Next, vitamin A palmitate. Short term treatment with vitamin A palmitate along with aromatic retinoid of all trans BA vitamin acid plus B6 BA vitamin acid may show healing and improvement. Next, nystatin therapy. Given in candida leukoplakia, 500,000 international units twice daily plus 20% borax glycerol or 1% gential violet or mouth rinses with chlorazine solution. Next, vitamin B complex. It is given as supplement in cases of commissural and lingual lesion. Next, antimycotic preparation can hasten and pimafacin has also been effective. Next, panthenol lingual tablet and oral spray may be used against glossitis and glossodynia in case of tongue lesions. Next, in some cases, administration of estrogen can be helpful. Now let's see about surgical management. Conventional surgery. The procedure of conventional surgery is first you should make an incision around the lesion including safe margins. Incision should be deep and wide. Affected area is then undermined and dissected from the underlying tissue. Sliding mucosal flap is prepared for covering the wound. After proper mobilization of the mucosal flap, it is advanced and multiple interrupted black silk switches are used. Approximate the fridges. So this is conventional surgery. This is the procedure for conventional surgery. And post-operative application of ice bags to the site is advised to minimize bleeding and swelling. Next, cryosurgery. In this technique, the tissue is exposed to extreme cold to produce irreversible cell damage. Cell death occurs at minus 20 degree Celsius. Next, fulguration, electrocautery and electrosurgery. It is a technique in which there is destruction of tissues by high voltage electric current and the action is controlled by movable electrode. Next, laser. Carbon dioxide lasers are most commonly used in oral lesions due to their great affinity for any tissue with high water content and their minimum penetration depth that is 0.2 to 0.3 mm in oral tissue. Carbon dioxide lasers contain carbon dioxide, nitrogen and helium gases. Thank you everyone.